to welcome you to Golden Rule Media Entertainment, and this is a conversation. My name is Yaya Diamond, and I am your host, Woo people. All right, so we got a great, great storyteller on the show today, as well as, you know, kind of storytelling music. I mean, it goes hand in hand, and I want to welcome Temple Tai to the show. It's right, Temple Tai, right? Yes, ma'am. I appreciate you having me. Ah, awesome. So the, the, okay, so tell me about the E, the, the three. Yeah, 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 it's actually a three. Um, I'm, I'm big into anything having meaning, you know, anything I'm attached to. And uh, three is the number of completion, the number of creativity, imagination. So that's definitely something that I attach to myself. And I want to make sure it was, you know, in my name. Awesome. I knew it had yeah. a meeting because it's a backwards <laughs> E3. I'm like, okay, no, I got to ask him about that. Okay, yeah, so let's sure. go back a little bit. Let's go back to the beginning of, of when you maybe knew you were going to do it, you weren't doing it. How did you kind of get yourself into this? Uh, to be honest with you, I always, I was actually an athlete first, you know, uh, playing sports in high school. I was fortunate enough to go to college for a little while. Um, but for me, my music, my love for music actually started uh, moving around so much. So I'm from Alabama, but every summer I lived in, I stayed in New York and I would just travel when I ran track to these different states and different places. So for me, you know, in the summertime, I'd be listening to these hip hop artists like DMX and Nas and Cameron, but then I'd go home and I'd be listening to Wayne, Boosie, Gotti, you know, this, this, this Southern movement too. So it, I think, you know, it helped me, it benefited me because it allowed me to kind of have that year to listen to the music and not just a style. Um, and for me, it kind of came, you know, head on where there was a point in my life where I was actually uh, going to court for a while, facing time. And it was one of the situations where I just didn't know how long I knew I was going. So writing actually became that discipline for me to sit down and kind of get out what I was feeling, what I was thinking. Um, and it was something I wanted to practice when I go in there. So that way I can kind of keep my head right and end up developing after that. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's so many different people that I've talked to that have been incarcerated, you know, gone in and came out on the top. And there's yeah. so many people that haven't. What was the trick to you coming out on top and, and doing what you love to do and being successful at it? Uh, mentality. It, it was 100% that because... Um, I told somebody the other day, you know, I saw guys that had less time than I did and they would just crack and just break and just lose, lose hope and lose sight and feel like that's the only place they would be. But then I'd see some men that were, you know, 20 years in and they would still wake up every day and pray, clean themselves, eat right, you know what I'm saying, conduct themselves with respect and move a certain way. So um, being that I've always been an observer first before, you know, I make any moves, I was able to kind of see that and understand that, you know, it was how they carry themselves. So for me, again, you know, uh, the writing was a big deal. Being able to write what I was seeing, being able to kind of translate what I had going on because, you know, I was there by myself, no affiliation. So for me, that pen was that was that uh, muse for me, you know? Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And, it, it, you know, being, being that positive role model, you know, going through the tri tribulation that you went through and then coming out on the top, that is not easy. I'm, I mean, that's, that can't be easy. It just can't be it. because I mean it's it's like it 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 brings your demeanor down automatically and you have to deliberately push it up every day. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and you have to, I mean, you can learn from it or you can let it affect you in a negative way. And for me, it it allowed me to learn how to deal with people, even when people didn't know how to deal with themselves, you know, because like you said, there's sometimes, you know, guys would be three weeks and they're just good happy go lucky good energy staying positive and then one day they just wake up upset because you know you wake up and see where you're at so sometimes you know you would understand and see and like okay he's having one of those days or he's kind of going through that emotion um and then it allowed me to kind of realize what I was going through too because some days you know I woke up pissed off you know and forgetting that that was just you know I was just passing through mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so with all of that said has this affected your storytelling and your writing and your music in any way? Absolutely. I mean, the hindsight is twenty twenty, so I can say it was a blessing in disguise in a way. Um, it calmed me down a lot, but it also gave me um, a purpose to my writing, to where you know I'm not just kind of saying random things. You know, I'm I'm going through these experiences, I'm going through these stories, I'm going through these moments, whether it be me living somewhere good and doing okay, or me just you know remembering. Where I came from and uh it, it helped me develop the delivery more than anything because in there you know it was it was like almost a battle kind of atmosphere 
So once they found out I could rap, it was like, all right, you know, let's let's go. I got money on this dude. I got money on light skin dude. So you know, <laughs> once I was able to perform and like really just destroy what I was doing, it gave me that like looking around, like okay, like I, I can do this for real. Like I'm actually better than average. So um, that that kind of realigned that focus. But you know, there was a lot of people I saw that they didn't have that thing. They didn't have that that avenue to kind of distract themselves. If you want to say, wow, wow. Well, I'm just happy that you did and I'm happy that you're out. You know, what are you doing for the, you know, for your, your conscious sake? Are you going back? Are you uh, writing anybody or are you trying to reach back and pull their spirits back up in any kind of way or any other, the youngsters? No, absolutely. Absolutely. That's a huge thing for me, especially coming in my community because um, it's so easy to get caught into the system. And especially with these younger guys, you know, whether it be whoever their role model is, they hear the beginning and sometimes they hear the end. So they hear the result of this person getting out and being successful, or they hear the beginning of this person just cutting up and getting this reputation. But they don't think about that middle part of those five years to 10 years when you're in a place with no gun and you're by yourself. So I, for me, that's definitely something I wanted to pass on because, you know, I got to see people really change and be a different way. And to be honest with you, people come home and they're not going to tell you, um, oh, I had it hard or, oh, it was tough. You know, they're going to, they was, they were the toughest guy in there every time. So, oh, yeah. you know, for me, I always, <laughs> yeah, you know how it is. So I try to break that mold for these younger guys and realize like, you don't get no stripes for this. You know, this, this kills your creativity. It kills your goals and the world keeps moving. So for me, that's the biggest thing I want to do. And that's actually what my team and I are working on is, um, you know, working on a nonprofit for uh, prison reform, especially in Alabama with the recidivism rate being so high, uh, we want to make sure that it's an actual rehabilitation center and not just a detention center, you know, yeah. not just, you know, because it's, especially now I saw it too, you know, I saw, I saw more, more drugs and crime there than I ever saw in the street, you know, and uh, I saw people adapt and really get creative to do some of the worst things that they could do, whereas it could have easily been turned around another way had they had some type of avenue, you know what I mean? But that's definitely what I want to do. I want to make it a rehabilitation center instead of a you know detention center. Wow, you know a lot of people on the outside that have never been on the inside, like me. I you know I did scare straight. I was that that generation where they did right. the scare straight thing where we went yeah. into prison. I was one of the kids <laughs> that went in, and I was like, "Why am I here?" Like I was not a bad kid. I was like the one that yeah. never got in trouble, but they put me in there, and I was like scared. Yeah, I was scared straight. I definitely was. If if I was on a narrow path or even a tilted path, I was straight that day. I was. <laughs> yeah. But, it's it's sad to see and sad to hear that there are more drugs in than there are out. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Because you know, I've, I've in between my life, you know, like I said, I've lived in different places. I've lived some good places. I've lived some bad places, and even in the worst places, I never saw as much as what I like. Going in, that my mentality was prepared for some of the things I'd see. You know, violence, um, um, just the the main things you hear, but. For me to see people, you know, doing drugs of all kinds, you know, and having the tools to use them and do it, man, it, that, I'm not going to lie to you, that kind of like, it really tripped me out to see that because I wasn't expecting that. I'm thinking that we're just doing our time and going home, you know. And the so, biggest thing I'm, uh, okay, I, I don't know if I want to go here, but I'm going to. All right. I'm with you. Thing, going. Okay. The biggest thing I see is that, okay, if it is a rehabilitation center where people have to go in and they are, they're serving their time, but they have the opportunity to maybe go to school, go to college or do different things. But, you know, isn't it like supposed to be like, I don't know, how would I say this? Uh, guarded by guards who keep stuff yeah. that's not supposed <laughs> to get in out. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, right? I'm, I'm with you on that. <laughs> uh, no, it's not enough. It's not oh enough. Over, overpopulation in prisons is a big issue as well, especially in Alabama. Uh, you know, you have prisons that are 10,000 over the limit and you have, you know, extra beds being pushed in and things like that. And I've seen personally where, you know, it's two guards and 300 guys in an open bay area. So, you know, what, <laughs> what can really be done, you know? And a lot of times too, you know, respect to these guards, um, the ones that do right, these guys are trying to go home to their families as well. So there's yeah. a lot of times that they're not going to risk their lives or their safety for, you know, one versus 300, 200 people. So, yeah. yeah, a lot of times it's, it's, but, you know, to be honest with you, the survival is respect. It's, it's, it's fully respect. It's, you know, showing respect amongst each other 
whether you're the biggest guy or the smallest guy, everybody shows respect because anything can happen at any time. And, um, you know, like I said, I know that's kind of negative, but on a positive side, again, that was a lesson for me to see. You know, I, I brought that back home with me to where, you know, I kind of give that respect in order to receive it. Yeah, yeah. And then you said it affected your music, your storytelling. Tell me about that. Yeah, because before, you know, my music, um, it was what I was going through in that moment. And once I got there, it was like, I see when I went to do my time, I knew the day I was getting out. I knew that in two years on this day, I'd be home. There are guys in there that have no idea when they're coming home. So the mindset is completely different. There's no, there's no end, you know, there's no finish line. So you see them act in a completely different way. So when I got to, to know exactly when I was going home, the day I went in, it gave me a different mindset to where I was able to sit back and kind of be calm and kind of see what I had going on. And it, like the example I just gave you with the drugs, it blew my mind to see how much was going on and how fast it was moving. And uh, man, I'm telling you, it looked like when I first went in, it looked like a city. And things were moving so fast and there was so much going on and this and that. And it was just like, it was mind blowing, you know? And like you said, there's guards, but nothing is guarded. And um, but on the, on the negative, you know, on the positive side, I got to hear a lot of stories. I got to speak to a lot of people. Um, I got to hear, you know, a lot of good stories of people changing and growing. And I got to learn those lessons from that. So a lot of times, even if I'm not telling a story in my music, I'm telling a perspective. You know, I'm telling an opinion or, you know, somebody that may not get to tell their story because they're never coming home. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. So, okay, so what is it? I mean, I, I mean, you know, we could talk about this the entire time because right. that is just so relevant and it's it's just such a sad situation uh, for some people that don't even have to be there or wrongly persecuted or put in and put in prison and they didn't even do anything. There's just so many different things we could talk about. But I'm glad yeah. you're out. And now let's talk about the music that has happened yeah. to you now that you are here and you've had that experience. It's been, it's been, you know, to me, I think it had a positive outlook on you because you're determined to go after your goal. So tell me about your music. Yes, ma'am. So yeah, that's been exciting. I mean, ever since I came home, um, I kept my promise to myself and I, and I've, I've just been consistent and that's been the biggest thing. I'm a worker. I'm gonna always be making music because I love what I do. Um, and every time I drop something, you see the growth, you see the development, you see the production growing in it. You see the delivery get better because for me, even though I know I'm great, I always think I can be better and I always know I can learn. So um, the newest release was actually pushed back. And, you know, from that fan base starting to develop from the previous singles that I've released, it was actually one of my biggest releases. And it was great to kind of get that feedback and start getting that demand to perform and go places and things. Awesome. So tell me about the performance. I mean, are you do you have anything coming up? Uh, as of for this year we don't but we're trying to change that because um i'm kind of i'm really loving the feedback i'm getting from some of these other cities right now i'm in florida but some of these other cities are showing me a lot of love and i really want to get out there oh yeah okay i'm in jacksonville florida i'm in sarasota okay okay not far at all <laughs> no nope, no nope. about what that's like four hours right like about I four think. hours I yeah think, yeah yeah three four hours depending on the for traffic sure. <laughs> that's that changes the whole drive <laughs> it does it changes the entire drive yes it does wow so okay so tell me what is the latest song you have out and is it and you know is it on all streaming platforms right now oh 100 percent. so all my music is on all streaming platforms from apple music spotify pandora even these or whatever it is um it's going to be under the same name of tempo Thai t3 mpo tai uh the latest release was pushback um we released that in march and like I said, I've been getting major love from it. I appreciate everybody on that. And uh, we actually have a new one coming up in a month or so that we're actually getting ready to promote. And so that means you're coming back? Absolutely. If you have me, I'm here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that would be amazing. Thank you so much for being on the show. How can people reach you, follow you? You have Instagram mm -hmm. or Facebook or anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. All of the above on all major platforms as well as streaming platforms. Like I said, it's one and only. Tempo Tai, T3, MPO, TAI. You'll be the only one you see. I appreciate any follows and love. And of course, you, yeah, yeah. Thank you. No, thank you. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. We're going to have all that information in the description box below so that you can follow Tempo T3. Okay. It's I have to look at it. MPO, TAI. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> but definitely, definitely thank you so much for being here. You're an inspiration. Continue to be an inspiration and continue to, you know, and I hope and pray that your nonprofit will, will do some justice because, oh my gosh, I had no idea. Yeah, yes, yeah, a lot. But no, we're definitely going to do some positive. And again, thank you. Thank you. I'll see you again. Yes, definitely. And thank you guys so much again. And don't forget to dare to be different. Until next time, guys. Bye.